Hi, Penticton. Nice to see you. Well, we're in the middle of a war, aren't we? And it's a very unusual war. We're not used to this kind of war. And as a result, many of our family and friends can't see it for what it is. I believe we're already in an occupied country, that our freedoms have been taken away from us. And the intention was never that those lockdowns and those other measures were temporary. The plan all along was that they, this is part of a larger agenda of the capture and control of humanity globally. Now I know those are hard messages to hear. We would rather they're not true, we hope they're not true. Because not only does it mean that we are no longer free citizens, it means that we can't trust our government, we can't trust our medical industry, and we can't trust our mainstream media. And we can't trust big business, I agree. And so those are losses that are hard for us to accept. You know, I've worked with people over the years as part of my psychotherapy practice, and one of the things that I learned is that the loss of a dream is more painful than the loss of people. And what we're experiencing today is the loss of a dream of living in a free country. One of the reasons why I think Canadians are particularly susceptible to this takeover to this tyranny is that we've not experienced it before. We've lived in a free country. And we've had, for the most part, we've had a media that seemed to be committed to the truth. We had a medical system that seemed to care about us and our health. And a government that at one point seemed to be responsive. But that's not the situation today. So we have work to do. Many of us think that somebody else is going to solve this for us, for us and it's, that's not true. We think that there's a political solution here, and I don't think there is. We think that one day our Bonnie Henrys, our John Horrigans, our Prime Minister, our Dr. Theresa Tam is going to suddenly change their mind about all of these measures and give us back our freedoms. I don't see that happening. They have led us by the nose week after week, month after month, telling us that freedom is just around the corner, just a few more weeks. I'm getting tired of their lies. Now many of you know that back in July, or actually back in May, we retained Rocco Galati to file action on our behalf against the government of Canada, the government of Ontario, Theresa Tam, our chief medical officer, various health officers in Ontario, as well as against the Canadian Broadcast Corporation. That action was filed on July the 6th. What you may not know is that we held a press conference on July the 9th and we invited over 130 mainstream media to that press conference. And none of them showed up. Rocco heard later from someone with the CBC who said quietly, he said, we were not allowed to attend that press conference. This is our Canadian Broadcast Corporation. What we're seeing is that they're not interested in revealing the truth. They're a part of the corporate agenda. And the best thing we could do was to give, not to give them any of our attention any longer. You know, one of the things that I find fascinating on this journey is that there are many of us, like I'm sure all of you here, who see the deception, see the tyranny, see the corruption, see the fraud, see the malfeasance for what it is. I mean, it's, for those of us that can see it, it's hard not to see it. And yet many of our family and friends cannot see it, even though it's right there. And so a question I often ask people that can see it is, why do you think you can see it and others can't? 
And I'll tell you the answer that I get most frequently. Most people say to me, Ted, I stopped watching television 15 years ago. And though I think television isn't the only mechanism of control, I think it's one of the predominant mechanisms of control. I think the technology to program and hypnotize and take away our ability to think critically is very sophisticated. I had a colleague many years ago when I attended a psychology workshop and I sat and had lunch with her and I asked her what she did and she says, well, I'm actually looking for work right now. And I said, what did you used to do? And she said, I worked for a company that was embedding messages in television programs. And she said, I learned after six months that the intention of those messaging was evil. And she said, I resigned because I couldn't be a part of that. And she said, that was 10 years ago. And she said, the technology today is even more sophisticated. So I think we need to recognize that many of those that we care about have been captured. They can't think for themselves any longer. We may not actually be able to, to claim them. And so instead, we have to focus our efforts on reclaiming our freedom. That's our job. While the legal challenges, like what Rocco is doing, is absolutely critical, it sends a strong message that says governments will be held accountable. And I absolutely believe in the not too distant future, we will have Nuremberg type trials to take these people to jail. But if we're waiting for Rocco and those other legal challenges to solve this, I have to tell you that's not going to happen. To me, the people that are going to change this is you and I. It's going to be us standing up in numbers and saying, I will no longer consent to the tyranny. I will no longer comply. I will no longer be obedient. I'm going to make it as difficult as possible for you to take away my rights and freedoms. Now, I chatted with Kurt before the, this all began today, and he said, Ted, this is taking way too long. And I said, I know, it feels that way, doesn't it? But I said, there are two things that have to happen before this ends. The first one is, I believe those that are complicit need to be revealed. We need to identify who those people are that are working against us. And so I've been saying over and over again, this is not the great reset. This is the great reveal. And so those that are working for the dark side are being revealed. And that's one of the things that's happening. And so when our businesses refuse to honor our exemptions, when we've got courts that don't follow the rule of law, when we've got medical doctors that are injecting our 12-year-olds against the knowledge or consent of the parents, these are actions that are evil. And we need to figure out who is involved in evil and reveal those people. But I believe the second piece that has to happen is there is purpose in this challenge that we're facing. We're being called through an initiation. We're being called to step up and stand up and claim our authority. As Canadians, we've given away our authority to those elected representatives who have now are abusing and misusing it. It's time to take our authority back. And I believe as long as we think somebody else is going to solve this, this is going to continue. But when we start to own it and claim it and declare that this is my job, this is my responsibility, I am now the warrior of this generation to fight for freedom, that's how it will end. You know, in previous wars like World War II, our soldiers gave up their safety to fight for freedom. What I'm seeing today is people giving up their freedom to fight to, to claim safety. We've got it all backwards. So it's time that we recognize that there is some suffering that needs to happen. We need to stand up. Will it be difficult? It will be difficult. If we look to all of the movements that created a, a rise in consciousness and humanity that claimed a liberation of humanity, you look to what Gandhi did in India, what Martin Luther King did for the, the people, in the civil rights movement in the United States, you look at all of those movements, 
What it took is people standing up in mass and saying, I will no longer comply to the tyranny. And that's what we all have to do. Now, I know we're winning this battle. You can tell by the amount of force that's increasing, the amount of coercion that's increasing. That tells me they're, they know they're not winning. I believe that they are monitoring our electronic communications, our internet, our social media, and they can see that there's a shift of consciousness happening, and they're starting to get scared, and they should be scared. And so the media is not going to reveal that. They're not going to let it seem like they're losing this battle. And so they're keeping up their front. But I can tell you, I am inundated with emails. I actually have over 22,000 unread emails in my inbox that I haven't gotten to. I'm getting emails from doctors, from nurses, from airline pilots, from longshoremen, from people in the movie industry saying, this is enough. And so there's a voice that's rising. My new mantra is Canada is rising. And our job is to stand up and to stand free. And we know what that looks like because we lived with it. And so we're going to claim it back again. Thank you for being here.